Hello guys and welcome back to Sweet and Sour Soccer. This is now, honestly, one of my favourite features, episodes. I went in confident there and I didn't plan the next word. Let's go with features. This yeah, is transfer... What? Let's go with that, that works. Did I get away with that? Just about. Just about. Guys, this is Transfer Talk. We are hoping to bring this uh, in the season. We try and get one a week out. In this summer, we're hoping to do three, four. Listen, if we get news, we'll do it every day. Guys, massive shout out to the allegiance, the pure allegiance. I feel like that guy from Sparta, you know, the 300 movie where he's got all his soldiers taking on the world. I feel like that. All these Everton fans. Wow. I mean, I know Everton have huge support. I didn't realise it was that big, you know, on YouTube. Shout out to Mike at Blue Boys Network. What a guy. His channel's incredible. He's so funny. Yeah, I just don't know what to say. Blew me away. Yeah, definitely. For those that don't know, we're going to be doing a weekly show on there. And we did our first one yesterday, was it? It was yesterday, weren't it? Yeah, and he basically no. told, told everyone to go subscribe to us. And we that's why we've basically jumped up nearly 300, nearly 300. We're about 200, aren't we? 250 extra subs in a literally the space of 24 hours. But it's just anyway, on to the yeah, actual channel for um... those that don't don't really care about the actual channel itself. <laughs> we can we can sit here all night and try and suck my off, but it's not going to help you guys. Let's jump into a transfer that annoys the hell out of me, being a Wolves fan. Buendia to Villa. It looks like they're on the verge of having an unbelievable summer, a summer that we've wanted for a while. Scott, if Villa get Buendia with a few other names that we're going to mention and other names that we aren't even reporting on, what's going on? Buendia, uh, Buendia's looking dangerous. I, 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 I nearly said Buendia's looking dangerous. I meant Villa are looking dangerous. Villa are looking dangerous, I yeah. suppose Buendia is as well uh, when you look at his stats. But yeah, I think this is a brilliant signing. Still quite a young oh, young player. Um, with the knowledge of letting go now, I'm a bit, I find it a bit strange that the pet told of him last season. Especially when the transfer thing is kind of around the same. Villa fans will be delighted to know that they beat Arsenal to the signature. I think Arsenal were doing what they always do. They were, uh, you know, they were just pissing around with the um, the transfer price, basically. And Villa just went, you know what, we'll pay it. We'll get him in. And he was happy to sign. So, yeah, massive signing for them. Um, that doesn't really help Wolves, as we will come on to very shortly. I'm sure you've guessed it from the thumbnail. But uh, Villa's... Not only are Villa getting a class player, they're fucking the Wolves over. I don't like it. I don't yeah. like this one bit. Let's move on to another Villa signing. I can't believe I'm saying this as well. They're in for James Ward-Prowse, who I can't believe hasn't been the final inductee into Gareth's squad. For me to joke, the balls that that guy was playing against Romania, just unbelievable. Like, But um, Scott, if Villa get James Ward-Prowse as well, Grealis, Ward Prowse, Buendia, along with the midfield that they've got anyway. Oh, come on. Yeah, I know. It's going to be a mad one, isn't it? And I think um, all the clubs around so that kind of like, you know, European pushing on for European places, Everton, yeah. Spurs, probably Arsenal, you could throw into that mixture as well. I mean, Leeds, awesome. they're going to want to be pushing on again this season. Yeah. It's early warning signs, isn't it? Let's face it, to those type of clubs such as, I suppose we can throw ourselves Wolves in the mix, although things aren't looking great at the moment. Yeah, it's early warning signs. Villa are getting the business done early. Just like another club that we're about to mention, uh, you know, in a minute or two. And yeah. it's going to be good business, especially if they pull off Ward Prowse as well. Oh, absolutely. Can you imagine Ward Prowse whipping in balls with Grealish, Ollie Watkins, God knows who else they might sign as well. Just, yeah, I mean, fair play to Villa. As a Wolves fan, you don't like to hear it, but you can only give them kudos, you know. Yeah. Since um, since going, uh, well, almost going down uh, last season, not last season now, the year before, they've just done things right, haven't they? Let's try and keep our Everton faithful happy. And I don't know if this story will keep you happy or not. However, there are apparently three Premier League clubs who are after Chris Wood. Villa again. I just can't believe this. Another one. Villa, <laughs> Villa, Everton and West Ham. 
Dean Smith is apparently a big uh, admirer of him and wants him on his wish list. To give you a stat, guys, Chris Wood has scored double-figure Premier League goals in each of his last four seasons with Burnley. Double-figure Premier League goals, not all comps, and at a team like Burnley, wow. I think that's I think that's it, isn't it? Like when I first like saw the storyline, I was a bit like, "Hmm, really?" But then yeah. when you actually break it down and you start reading those kind of stats, like you are yeah. like, in fact, a real very good signing. I mean, Absolutely. Everton are interested. Is that partly due to the rumours that uh, Manchelotti might go in for Richarlison? Would they potentially be looking yes. for some, someone to uh, play alongside Calvert Lewin? But I don't know if them two would particularly match each other. Or is it just going to be back up? I mean, let's not forget teams are going to want strength and depth and yeah. everything, you know, they potentially would want want him. As you've mentioned, Villa would want him to wear a partner alongside Watkins. And the Absolutely. third team was West Ham, wasn't it? West Ham, obviously, they've got Antonio and that's pretty much it at the moment. So they definitely need strikers and need strength and depth in that area. So... Absolutely. I could see this transfer happen to, happening for any of the clubs, really. I, I think Burnley would try and keep a hold of him if they could. It's not easy to replace double-figure goal scorers in the yeah. Premier League, whether you're at the top of the Prem or the not, or not, or, say the bottom or the middle. It's not. It's not as easy as you think to find a, uh, a 10, 12, 15 goal season striker in the Prem alone. Forget all competitions. Let's move on to a bit of Scottish transfer news. Of course, it also does tie in with a club again in the Premier League who were rivaling Wolves a year or two ago. Not anymore. Eduardo to Leicester. It's a big steal, in my opinion. Yeah, we've already covered, haven't we, that Leicester have done their business early in, uh, try and pronounce this right, probably way off, um, Samari. Yes. Probably way off with that pronunciation, but yeah. They've got the business done early with that. And then this seems to be another one. This is their second signing already. But protect- this one's pretty much done from what's being said. It hasn't obviously hasn't been officially confirmed, but everything is pretty much in line for it to go through in the next few days. Um, of course, when the transfer window officially opens. So, yes, an- another great signing from Leicester. It'll, be- Leicester. it'll give them that strength and depth, won't it, for the Europa League, Leicester. I think that's where you saw them fall short. Probably... Probably not just in the Europa League, the last couple of seasons in the Champions League as sorry, in the Europa League as well, as well as the league. The league especially to get fourth, yeah. off, haven't you in like the last couple of seasons towards the back end? Having this um, extra firepower and probably probably, you know, to take the uh, the reins from Jamie Vardy, who's probably only got a year or two left in him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um I think a lot of people I'm seeing commenting now are saying that this could be Vardy's phasing out season. Would Vardy play for another Premier League team? I think he would. I don't think he'd go abroad. I don't see his personality wanting to live abroad. I think he's a humble guy, down to earth. You know, I I think he's got one more year, Vardy. Um, and I think we'll see him somewhere else in the Premier League. Uh, let's move on to a player that is leaving the Premier League and actually going abroad. We thought this man, Scott, was going to Barcelona and that's been the plan for what seems three, four, five, six months. Wijnaldum, PSG, last minute. They've apparently, Sky are saying it's almost done. But last week we did a video where Sky also said that his deal to Barca was actually done. So I don't even know what to believe anymore with this. I'm sure we've always, also done another one earlier on a few weeks ago where it was believed that Inter Milan were coming in to hijack that deal as well. So, um, yeah, no, I think a few people have been on the table for him. Looks like he is, if we are led to believe this time, but it is actually right. Yeah. It does look but Yeah, PSG have come in, they've hijacked it last minute. And it's, it's a shame, really. It's what's happening with the Spanish clubs in general, both Real Madrid and um, Barcelona. Yeah. The Major starting to struggle now that... Not the major pool they once were. They've got a lot of financial troubles. And, you know, PSG, let's face it, we know they've got money. Yeah, absolutely. I do like Wijnaldum as well. I think he's such a good player. It's a shame he's going to a dead league, but hopefully he makes uh, some good money before. You know, he's not young. Uh, I think he's 30 or coming 31, I think. So hopefully he gets a nice payday. Let's move on to a story that if you'd have brought this up to me six months ago... I'd have been biting your hand off for 35 mil. Now, 
kind of proved me a little bit wrong. And I think you've changed your opinion as well. I was you and you are now me. You would take the money for Nevers. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Guys, it's reported that because Arsenal is such a dead, banterous club that can't do a deal uh, with a, a championship club of Norwich, now they have They're to come the and take... now, be careful. Yeah, but you know, okay, whatever. It's not. It's no disrespect to Norwich. Fair play for coming up, but you know what I mean. It's more of a uh, disrespect to Arsenal. Dead, dead club. Um, yeah, they've lost Buendia, and now they want Neves. And I'm mean, even thirty-five million. This guy is like what? Twenty-one? 20, uh, sorry, twenty-three? Twenty? I think he's twenty-four now, actually. But still, I don't like this one bit. No, actually, to be honest, I don't like it for the fee. Um, oh, okay. No, I'm not. I'm not happy with the fee, and it's it's kind of changed a bit now. Now that we've got rid of Nuno, I kind of feel I'd want to see how he works in the, with the new manager. You know, yeah. um, see what he could bring to the table in that. Especially when we're seeing quite a few players potentially going out of walls. I think Neves we probably want to hang on to, but 35 mil feels a bit short for me. Especially as we know that Arsenal like to do their business by paying in instalments. We saw that with a Nicolas Pepe transfer, of course, paying 15 mil over five years. Uh, yeah, definitely one of those where, you know, I'd want all the cash up front if it is going to be 35 million. And more to the point, um, yeah, I think he'd do a brilliant job for Arsenal. He'd, he'd definitely fit in well to their three-man midfield. And I think and another interesting one is they've not only lost out on Buendia, it's been rumoured that um, Odegaard has been basically Real Madrid are saying, no, he's part of our plans, you're not having him. So, you know, they've lost yes. out on Odegaard too. There's, there's space to fill in that midfield and they believe Ruben Neves is the man to do that. So, yeah, yeah I, I mean, on this one. I've got to try and stay as impartial as possible, but I am human at the end of the day. And listen, if Arsenal do get Neves for thirty-five million, then they've got themselves a very, very good deal. Uh, another, another thing worth quickly mentioning is apparently uh, there is rumours that Neves has said he wants to go to Arsenal. Um, apparently, this is being yeah. led by the player and his agent more than the club wanting to sell as in Wolves. So, yeah, yeah apparently this has been led more by the player and agent himself. I mean, we won't go into the another agent rant, obviously, on Mendes because we've done that enough on this channel. But look, we're, we're getting the bad end of the Mendes saga, aren't we now? And we knew yeah, it was coming. We, see we that knew this window, was coming. Heading out the window in uh, Patricio, apparently. Yeah, we, we knew this would happen. It's all right in finding us all these players like Neves and Matinho and Samedo and all these great players, but they're going to leave eventually. And as you just touched on, we've covered uh, Patricio to Roma, uh, I think a week ago when uh, Mourinho got announced, those rumours are hotting up again now. So we'll wait and see on that one. We can't bring too much information on that. Nothing's concrete yet and nothing has advanced too much. Um, one more story I want to mention, uh, only because I like this player, and it regards, uh, it, sorry, it's in regards to Leicester City. Uh, Christian Fuchs, Premier League winner with them. I imagine they love him to bits, scored some great goals, always uh, gave everything he could for the club. He's gone to the MLS at Charlotte FC. Dead sounding team, but again, hopefully he makes some money towards the end of his career. Um, let's move on to our last, last big uh, transfer story of the day. And this is quite, this is hotted up out of nowhere, Scott, hasn't it? Trippier. Yeah, of course, uh, Trippier. Apparently United uh, are linked and so are Arsenal. I think um, United seem the more confident to get him because apparently he's said in England camp that he uh, wants to move to United. Obviously, Maybe he wouldn't want to move to Arsenal because of his Tottenham connections. Obviously, that would play a factor. Yeah, that's I, the, I might that's be wrong, the reason. But I feel like he's a northern lad too, is he? I, I, I don't feel like he's... I haven't heard him speak in interviews. I feel like he's more northern. He's a northern. He's not... I could be way off with that. But anyway... Oh, I don't yeah. even know. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, but apparently but could potentially be uh, moving to United. Bit of a weird one, this, for me, though. You know, they paid a lot of money for Wambasaka. I don't feel Wambasaka is a bad player. So, how do you get Wambasaka and Trippier both into that United team? Is Oli going to go for a back five with Wambasaka as a right centre back, or does um, does Oli think right? We need a centre back. We also need 
uh, an attacking player like a Sancho or maybe a new striker, what happens if I can get Trippier for 10, 15 million, stick Wan-Bissaka at centre-back with Harry Maguire to learn his trade? Because he's quite quick. We know he's not good on the ball, so he shouldn't be a right-back anyway, especially a Man United right-back who, you know, in years and decades gone by, their right-backs can play football. Gary Neville was good on the ball. Let's not pretend, you know, Raphael, Valencia, they've had good right-backs. So, wan for me isn't the option. Could he move to centre-back with Harry Maguire next to him? He's strong. He wins tackles like no one else on this planet That's apart it. from Kante. So, do we see a trippier Shaw, Maguire, wan back four for, our, for Man U next year? And you look at that on paper and you think... Wow, is that a back four that could now compete? Does that allow them to get Sancho? Does it allow them to get a top striker? Are they now playing with a defence? Bruno, uh, Rashford, Sancho or Kane or starting to look better than it has this season? That's a really good point, actually. It could be a cheaper option. And as you say, centre-backs, um, not easy to find, are they? Let's be honest. So maybe maybe Wambasaka has got in, that in his locker to move. I mean, we've not seen evidence of it, but I I'm think pretty he sure has... it's about. Um, isn't Wambasaka about six one, six two as well? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think you. I think you make a good point. He's got the defensive capability to perhaps make that move. Maybe they've been trying it out in training. Who, who knows? And of course, it would mean that they've got more money to put elsewhere. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, have you got any more stories that have come out breaking news while we've been on the stream? Or I think, think that's pretty much it on this one. I think it's dead. I think it's dead. Guys, Shall shout out again. I've ju- I just want to say thank you again to any Everton fans who are still watching. A bit dry on transfer talk, but we'll try and get some more for you very soon. We promise. Uh, Scott, it's time for one of your legendary outros. Take it away. Yeah, so if you've not done so already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and we'll see you on the next one.